I want to talk about uh, everything that's happening right now uh, with this virus. Uh, I'm sure you've all seen the news reports and the uh, advice to stay home, don't make any non-essential travel. So I'll leave that to the experts and I want to talk about the economics and uh, the class nature of this crisis. So we're essentially in a wartime situation, right? We've closed down large sections of the economy and somebody is going to have to pay for that. That's not free. That's the most expensive thing we've done maybe since World War Two. The immediate impact of the crisis is a balance sheet crisis across the whole economy. What that means is, uh, you know, as a business, you see your sales fall. You go, okay, I need to lay off workers. As a worker, you get laid off or you get reduced hours, and you go, okay, well, I, I can't really afford to buy anything other anything other than the essentials. Um, and people start to go into debt. We borrow. We borrow on credit cards. Uh, we borrow from overdrafts, including, of course, business overdrafts. And we uh, defer payments. So, especially businesses. I think in individuals have less of a chance of doing this. But businesses will be going to their suppliers and saying, "I can't pay you this month." They'll be going to their landlords and saying, "I need a deferment." The first thing that we're going to have to fight for uh, at a large scale is for this not to become our debt because so by default if we're given mortgage holidays and rent holidays I mean, if we even win those things for the duration by default those things are going to accrue as debts right so you'll come out on the other side you say well I didn't pay rent for three months and that really helped me out. But now I owe three months rent and I'm meant to organize a repayment scheme with my landlord. That we, That's not gonna fly. Uh, and we have to be crystal clear that that's not gonna fly. If that's, if that's what they try to do, uh, it will be necessary to organize a mass scale rent strike, a national, an international rent strike. That's not an easy thing to do, uh, but tenant organizing uh, is is out there. There are paid organizers out there. And in a situation like this, I think they'll find widespread support and be able to ramp up well beyond what they could achieve in a, a normal situation. The best thing would be for the government to bail us all out. Some countries are doing that to some extent, uh, where the government is backstopping wages. That's a that's a start, but we need to be really sharp. Someone is going to have to pay for that government debt, and it should be the banks. It should not be us. If someone has to fail, it should be the the banks and the financiers, and not the working people. Something we're seeing really clearly in this crisis is whose labour really matters. Uh, you know, nurses and doctors, grocery workers, cleaners. I've been arguing for years that the idea that cleaning is a low-skill job, an unskilled labour, is ridiculous. Uh, cleaning something thoroughly to, to disinfect it like cleaning a whole supermarket thoroughly to disinfect it or a, a whole hospital that's that is highly skilled labor that i don't have all of those skills myself um and we should we should be treating it as such delivery drivers post people so the, what we're seeing is that that's where value comes from is the uh, the socially necessary labor of the working people and when that is interrupted, that's when we all suffer. And that's when even things like the stock market collapse. But we're not going to be treated better 
out of the kindness of the hearts of the ruling class. That has never happened in history, unfortunately. So we have to be ready to fight. Here in Britain, people love to talk about the Blitz spirit, which was when uh, Germany was bombing during World War II. People in London apparently banded together. There are very famous photos of people sheltering in the underground stations in London because those were relatively safe from the bombs. What isn't so well known is that the government resisted opening the underground stations. Now, if you were better off and had a back garden, you could have your own small, inadequate bomb shelter there. But if you were poor and living in cramped conditions, in shared flats, then you didn't you didn't have a bomb shelter in your garden. I mean, you didn't have a garden. And the only way that people got access to the underground stations was by protest. The Communist Party, believe it or not, organised occupations of hotels, using them as shelters, and that forced the government to act. Another example from the First World War, uh, here in Glasgow, a woman called Mary Barber, who they recently built a statue of, organised a rent strike, because the landlords saw the crisis as a time when we were weak and they could up rents. Uh, it was, of course, mostly the women. The men were away fighting the war, the able-bodied men. And uh, one woman at a time would go out to do her groceries and another would sit with a bell ready to warn anyone if the bailiff came to repossess her house. They, they won that rent strike. So the crises, wars, pandemic can be times of intense class struggle. And I really think you want to get ready for that. What does that mean? That doesn't just mean mentally preparing yourself. It means organizing. Uh, to give one small example uh, here in my community, uh, we have a Facebook group where residents can talk to each other. We have a, a phone system. There's a couple of residents volunteered to be a contact point, especially for you know, older folk who, who need food delivered to them or they need someone to help them out. That's the main purpose right now. Um, but also, I uh, just learned today, uh, a whole load of people have taken it on themselves to go to some disused land around the corner and create community vegetable garden because, of course, food's in short supply right now with all the hoarding. They didn't stop to ask permission as far as I know. They saw some disused land and they're turning it into productive land for the needs of the people. It's always better to ask forgiveness than permission with these kinds of things. Because if you phone up your city council, they're just going to quote you whatever the regulations are. You don't need that. Just get out there and plant some carrots. So these activities, these collective activities and these communication mechanisms that are being established right now are essential. Uh, if it comes to rent strikes, if it comes to protests, these will be the mechanism we use to uh, enforce those, to build them, to get everybody involved. So the number one thing you could be doing right now in my book, uh, if, if you're not an emergency worker or a postie or a delivery driver or a cleaner or a grocery worker, if you're, you know, working from home or whatever, and you don't, ha you're not, don't have a, a health condition yourself, uh, put a note through your neighbour's doors and w wear gloves don't spread any infection you could be infected act as though you're infected uh, send your sterilised notes through neighbour's doors give them your phone number get them into a joint Facebook group maybe start a community garden it's only by building that kind of horizontal communication that we'll have the resiliency to see ourselves through this crisis. Because believe you me, the, the fight over who pays for it is coming and it's coming soon. But we know from history that when we stick together, when we organize locally and then build that into larger regional and national organizations, we can't, we can't be beaten. And the reason we can't be beaten 
is that we do the important work. We do the cleaning, we make the deliveries, we make this whole system function. And the people that own it all and profit from it all need us so much more than we need them. Thanks.